Attack on Mika! You're getting married? Congratulations! Wonderful news! Right? I just got proposed the other day at a restaurant! I'm Chica. I got involved in an accident two years ago, and I'm no longer able to move my legs. Now that I had a disability, I used a wheelchair every day. I work as a composer and live my life busily every day. One day, I got a phone call from my best friend from high school, Manami. So, about the wedding, you'll come, right, Chica? Yeah, uh, but uh, I'm on a wheelchair. Is that okay? Won't it bother other people? It'll be fine. Many ceremonial halls recently are barrier-free. A wheelchair shouldn't be a problem. Besides, I want you to come for sure. Really? Then I'll keep that day open. Yeah, tell your husband about it too. And then, on the day of Manami's wedding... Unfortunately, my husband had work, so he decided to join Midway. I went to the ceremonial hall on my own. At the ceremonial hall, the hall staff assisted me when we had to move from the waiting room. We will now move to the chapel. Yes, thank you. Whoa! A disabled person? Your wheelchair is in the way. Sorry. Gosh, think about others, you freak. Jeez, and your clothes are so plain, too. You look like you're in poverty, not fit for a ceremony like this. I think it's the appropriate manner to come to a wedding ceremony dressed rather plain so that the bride and groom stand out. Ha! <laughs> Never heard of that before. Don't be such a sour grape. Well, I do understand you might be jealous of my attire, but don't show your jealousy in front of a crowd of people, okay? It's not that. Okay, okay. Jealousy really is a hassle. So don't you come to talk to me anymore. What's wrong with that guy? First of all, he shouldn't be coming to a wedding ceremony dressed in such flashy clothing. He's got rings and earrings on too. He looks like he wants to stand out. The bad feeling I had towards that man was correct. He continued showing bad manners and stood out, even during the ceremony. We can hear your music pouring out of your earphones. The ceremony will start soon. Excuse me, the ceremony will start soon, so would you please stop listening to music on your earphones? Hmm? Excuse me. <laughs> Although the hall staff warned the man several times, the man continued to ignore it. Unfortunately, nobody was able to stop the man, and the ceremony began as he continued sitting there with music pouring out of his earphones. The ceremony itself carried on without problem, but everyone was left with a bad feeling. Is this guy stupid? <sighs> I was looking forward to the ceremony. But I couldn't concentrate because of that man. Mrs. Chica, it is time to move. I shall assist you. Oh, I'll leave last. I wouldn't want to be in the way of others. Understood. Oh, the breads are so cute. So, how do you and the bride and groom know each other, Mrs. Chica? I was the bride Manami's classmate in high school. We even lived together before. I also met the groom Yuki before in the past. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I got a message from another staff member. Yes. Oh? Not enough people, but I'm... Did something happen? I'm sorry, it seems like they're short on people, but I must assist you, Mrs. Chica. Uh, don't worry, you may go. It's not a long distance from here, I can manage on my own. I is that so? Uh, well then, I will be right back. Okay, I have to make it in time though. That was when... <laughs> Ow! You again? Uh... I didn't think I will meet this man here. Don't stand in front of me, you broke woman! Wait, stand was the wrong word to use. <laughs> uh. Get lost. You're in the way of everybody roaming around in your wheelchair. I apologize for bumping into you, but you don't have to say that much. Huh? Shut up! Don't get so cocky, you disabled woman! <laughs> <laughs> Would you look at that? Still, I feel sorry for the staff who has to take care of garbage like you. Don't you understand that you're a bother to everyone? I know. I did hear that the hall is short on staff members, too. Right? It's no doubt that every other participant thinks you're in the way. Your existence is disrupting everyone. Just go home. But... Well, if you insist on participating even after this, why don't you? If you can stand up on your own and walk to the hall, that is... Please wait! Wait! Somebody... What should I do? I'll be late for the ceremony like this. Nobody's around and I can't get up on my own. 
Who's that? Chica! Manami. And Yuki, too. Are you okay? Good. Uh, that should do. But what happened? Um, I was just suddenly kicked off my chair. Could it be? The idiot Kanayatsu? The blonde-haired man with the leather jacket? Yes, that's him. Uh, how did you know? It's only he who'd do such a thing. He's a co-worker of Manami's and mine, but he's always like that. The truth is, we didn't even invite him to the wedding today. Is that so? Yes. We didn't even ask. But he insisted that he'd play the guitar for us, and forced his way into participating. He's very self-assertive, so he had to find a way to perform in front of other people. He's really troublesome. But he might be saying the truth. It's true that I can't do anything on my own. Even now, if you two hadn't come, I would have been on the floor on my own. If I'm in the way of other people, maybe I should just go home. I never thought once in my life that you were a bother. That's true. First of all, if it weren't for you, Manami and I would have never met each other. So we want you to participate in the ceremony until the end. Really? Do you think so? Of course. Besides, it's not a fulfilling wedding without my most important friend. If anything, it's Kaneyasu who's in the way of everything. There's no need for you to listen to him and go home. Okay. Well then, I will stay here until the end of the ceremony. Thank you. Okay then, let's go to the ceremony hall. With the two's encouraging words, I decided to stay until the end of the reception. However... Hey! Why are you sitting at the same table as me? You're so cocky, you broke bitch! Listen up, I'm going to play the guitar today. I'm on a different level than you, bitch! Maybe so, but the seats were already arranged from the beginning. You can't listen to me? Then I'll force you to- That's enough! Besides, this lady is not poor! She's the wife of a company CEO, and she saved my life! Huh? This woman with such plain, weary clothes can't be someone that important. And what do you mean she saved your life? Remember when I got into that accident two years ago? It was Mrs. Chica who protected me and helped me back then. Huh? Ah, I do remember you saying that. But it doesn't change the fact that she's broke. Sorry I'm late. Huh? Darling, so you finished work? Yeah. Sorry for making you wait. Th that face? Could it be? Are you the guitarist and singer of the super famous rock band? Takahiro? You're this top musician, and you own a music agency, too. So, that means the woman right here is... Cat-like beard? Cute. You are correct. I am Chika, Takahira's wife and musical composer. The songs that you always listen to are composed by me. What happened? The truth is... I told my husband all that I went through today and what Kaneyasu did to me. Although my husband is usually kind and calm, he turned bright red by the time I finished telling him the story. What the hell is that?! You! How dare you treat my wife like that?! D don't blame me for everything! First of all, disabled scum of society shouldn't come close to me. If you don't want to be treated that way, you should have listened to me and gone home. That's enough, idiot! She used her whole body to protect me when I was about to get hit by that car! Because of that, she can't use her legs anymore! And yet, she didn't blame me once! And what about you? Remember? When I told you about the accident, you made fun of her, saying it's stupid to protect someone else and end up unable to walk on your own. You were laughing! And you messed up our wedding, too! Today! Who's the real scum of society? That's... I will never forgive you for treating Mrs. Chica badly! If you have a problem, you go home! That's right! Stop disrupting the ceremony any further! You're the one who's in the way of everyone else! This is supposed to be a place of celebration! Get lost! Seems like everyone feels the same way. Let's have you go home then. Staff, please, take him out. Wait a second, I practiced my guitar for today! Don't worry, I will play the guitar in your place. What? Takahiro's live performance? We were planning on having Mr. Takahiro perform in the first place. We didn't need you and your guitar from the beginning. Then we can perform together! Let me perform with Takahiro! Why would I want to play the guitar with a man who insulted my precious wife? You ruined the whole mood of the ceremony. I'm going to play the guitar to bring back the merry mood of the ceremony. So get lost, you troublemaker! 
No way! You're telling me that I'm in the way of everyone? Although Kaneyasu desperately refused to leave, the staff took him out of the ceremony hall. After Kaneyasu left, Takahiro performed playing his guitar at the reception. Thanks to him, the ceremony got back its merry mood, and everyone enjoyed the performance. It became a day that everyone will remember. Many things happened, but it was a great ceremony, wasn't it? I heard that Manami and Yuki are doing great together. That's great news! But it must be troublesome to be working with that man, Kaneyasu. The thing is, the company president came to greet us after that. He caused a lot of trouble to many people in this incident, and apparently he's been using the company's money for his own expenses. He was fired. You know he was covered with flashy jewelry at the ceremony too? Apparently he bought those with debt. You're saying a guy like that kicked you off of your wheelchair? Ugh, just thinking about it makes me want to punch him in the face! It's all fine. Besides, after he was fired from his job, the debt collectors were after him. Now there's a rumor saying that he's working on a fishing boat. If he goes through that much, I think I'll learn his lesson. But I feel bad that I messed up the ceremony. I feel terrible. You didn't mess it up. Here's a letter. Huh? The letter that Takahiro gave me was one written by Manami and Yuki. They sent it to me after the wedding ceremony. Thank you for coming to our wedding. Thanks to you, we were able to have a wonderful ceremony that we will never forget. We are very happy that we were able to see you. They're thanking you this much. There's nothing you have to feel bad about, Chika. Besides, the songs that you compose gave everyone hope and courage. Nobody thinks of you as a father. That's true. Then I will continue writing songs that will touch people's hearts. Then I will sing the songs that you compose. Let's try harder together so that more people will listen. Yeah, thank you. It's not rare that I get told I'm a bother to others just because I'm on a wheelchair. But by composing songs that help other people, I'm told my existence is necessary. The real troublemakers are people like Kaneyasu who forgot how to treat others with respect. That's why I will never forget the feeling of gratitude I have towards everyone who support me. With that, I will continue to live with all my might. Damn, I'm so sleepy. But I have to get going. I have an important meeting today. This may be the most important meeting of my career. I'm gonna give it my best! I'm Ken Katori. Early one morning, I was heading to the office when... What the hell? I ran toward the loud crashing sound. Holy smokes, seriously? A drunk driver? Oh man, a kid's been hit? Looks like the kid jumped out into the street and the car swerved to avoid him. Hey kid, you okay? Oh, ouch, ugh. Just looks like some minor scrapes and cuts. Phew, that's a relief. What about the car? I ran over and inspected the car and the driver. <sighs> Are you okay, mister? Can you hear me? Uh... Well, at least he's conscious. But his breathing's pretty weak, and he looks like he lost a lot of blood. Gotta get him away from the vehicle! This thing just might blow! I pulled the driver carefully out of the car and to a safe distance. I immediately called the police and ambulance and gave him as much care as I could. Alright, finally! Over here! Over here! Hurry! I explained the situation to the rescuers and rode to the hospital with the man. Ah, Mr. Katori. Thanks to your immediate care, I think you may have just saved his life, young man. He sustained some cuts and bruises and has a minor fracture in his left leg, but all in all, he's going to be fine. Nothing life-threatening. That's great. <sighs> Didn't think reading manga like Blackjack would actually come in handy. I confirmed that the driver was okay and calmed down a bit after the ordeal, when... Oh crap! I have to go to work! It was a little after 9am. I had completely forgotten about that important meeting at work! I got this bad habit of focusing on one thing and everything else goes out the window. Bad habit or not, why now?! Anyway, first things first. I should call Mr. Seko at the office right away! Hello? Hello? Mr. Seko? Where the hell are you, Katori? I'm really sorry, 
I got caught up in a traffic accident on my way to work. I couldn't call right away because I was giving first aid and had to explain things to the cops. Huh? An accident? Come on, Katori. Can't you think of a better sham story? Mr. Sacco, it's not a sham, sir. Anyway, forget it. You really screwed up the meeting today. Gonna have to let you go. You're fired. Huh? What? Wait a second! Mr. Sacco? Mr. Sacco! No way this is happening. My mind went totally blank. All I did was save a guy and the kid, and this is what I get? I lose my freaking job over this? No way. What am I saying? Yeah, yeah, this can't be the end. I'll explain things again more thoroughly, and they'll believe me. Yeah. I was about to hurry to the office when I saw two guys rushing down the hall of the hospital. By the look of it, they definitely looked like hoodlums. They worriedly rushed toward the room where the driver was. Hey, Mr. Yasu! The boss's room is over here! Tetsu, how many times do I have to tell you to keep it down at the hospital? Sorry, Mr. Yasu! Who the hell are you, buddy? Huh? I'm the guy... The guy who came across the accident. Eh? So if it was you who did this to the boss, you... You sure got Borals to be coming here, buddy! Hey, Tetsu! Can't you see it's the guy who rescued the boss? Seriously? Man, hey, buddy! I'm super sorry! Who are these guys? Wonder if they're like brothers or something. But the age difference makes it unlikely. Come on now! Keep it down in the hospital. Mr. Katori, these people are what you call Yakuza. Huh? Yakuza? Yes, the Yakuza use our hospital on a regular basis. We've known Mr. Kyohoku and his gang for a very long time at this hospital. So, does that mean Mr. Kyohoku is a Yakuza boss? Oh boy, who the hell did I just rescue? Mr. Katori, thanks so much for helping the boss. Appreciate it, mister. This is just a token of our appreciation. Please accept it. First you receive a gift from the Yakuza, then you become acquainted with them, then you become part of their underworld society, and finally you're an outcast from normal society! No, please! I can't accept that! Hey, wait a minute, mister! After hearing they were Yakuza, I lost all composure and just dashed out of the hospital as soon as I could. When I think about it now, I guess it was like getting candy at Halloween. Should have just accepted it. Hmm. Here he goes. After that, I went directly to the office and tried to talk with Mr. Seko about reinstating my job, but... Oh, too late. I already put the papes through and got the okay from above. Our profit margin was struggling recently, and we were just about to do some restructuring, so the higher-ups were actually kind of glad to get rid of you. Evidently, you're gonna get a tiny retirement pay package. So not all is lost, huh? <laughs> Mr. Seko had already talked to administration about me, and I was no longer an employee. Well, that confirmed the loss of my job, making me unemployed. I cleared out my desk and left the company. According to a co-worker... Hey man, I heard that Seko took on that project you were working on and made it his own. Evidently, he wasn't too happy about a former underling getting promoted to take over this project. It seems he worked behind your back to get you fired. Huh? So you're saying I got fired for a personal grudge? Just because you missed a meeting seems a bit strange to get fired over that. I objected, but as you know, people with power are the only ones that are heard. Mr. Seko is a bit of a jerk, but I hate to admit that he's pretty good at his job. Sorry. I should have done more. You don't have to apologize. You should also be wary of Mr. Seko. Don't lose hope, buddy. Damn it. No time to be comforting an ex-co-worker. I mean, I am unemployed at the moment. I immediately started looking for a new job. Seems you're going through a lot, Mr. Katori. But the economy isn't exactly going smoothly. But I'll get in touch with some of my buddies and introduce you to a good job. Seriously? That would be great! Thank you so much! I got some help from Mr. Yamashiro, who was a previous client. He introduced me to a new company, and arranged it so that I was headhunted by another company. It's basically the same sort of company, but a lot smaller. But everyone working there was very nice, and they had enough confidence in me that they would often ask me to take on some very important projects. To be honest, 
I enjoyed working there. Three years passed since that incident. Hey, Katori, would you work on this project? Yes, sir. I would be more than happy to. Sure looks good in that suit. I was selected as the leader of a big project. This large-scale project required the use of considerable real estate, so I went around looking for some suitable property. Then, I ran into that guy. Hey, is that you, Katori? Man, it's been a while, buddy. It was my previous boss, Mr. Seko. He had just concluded negotiations with the property owner when he approached me. Wow, never thought I would run into you here of all places. What have you been up to? Yeah, well, this and that, I suppose. No different from me, then. But to land a job in the same business at a lower-ranking minor corporation? Nice! <laughs> Low rank? Minor? This guy... I was able to get promoted thanks to the project you started. That project was 95% completed by me! How could this jerk brag about it being his own? The gall! Well, if you're looking for real estate around here, you better look elsewhere. You're wasting your time here, buddy. For your information, I'm just about to conclude an agreement here. Well, with you leading the project, negotiations will probably not get very far. <laughs> with Mr. Seko leading this project, there was no way I was going to get anywhere. Then, I heard a familiar sounding voice coming from behind me. Eh? Huh? What the? Hey, it's you, Mr. Cantori, buddy! Hey, boss, this is the guy, the guy who saved your life! Tetsu, how many friggin' times do I gotta keep telling you? Have a little respect for the boss! Yeah, sorry about that. So, you're the guy who saved my life. It was the Yakuza boss, Mr. Kyohoku! The guy I rescued from the car three years ago, and his gang members I met at the hospital! I'm sorry I wasn't able to properly thank you for saving my life. I wanted to visit, but figured you wouldn't exactly be comfortable. No, please. It was nothing. So, what have you been up to? I have some business around here. I explained the situation, and Mr. Kyohoku said, Okay. I see. Our organization owns all this real estate. I owe you my life, so I want to negotiate the real estate with your company. I can't lease it for free. But what do you say to one-tenth the cost, huh? What? Are you serious? What? That sure was a 180. My god, I was suddenly offered a chance to get this property at a super reduced price. But Mr. Seko would have none of it. Wait just one second! I brought this to you first! Who the hell are you? Um, uh, I'm the one who rescued you three years ago. When Katori ran into that accident, well, he called me at the time, and I immediately made the call to the ambulance and police, basically saving your life. Katori was all panicky and probably doesn't remember any of it, so I instructed the rescuers. Seko started spewing lie after lie about the incident. I couldn't believe the dirty tricks he was using, so I decided right then and there to play a little trick on him. So, it was you, Mr. Seko. You were the one who called the authorities and made all the arrangements to save his life? Yep. You got that right. Okay then, would you please explain the situation at the time? Well, first off, well, I was going to, you know... What was the first thing you did for Mr. Kyohoku? Well, first off, since the car ran into him, I had them verify that he was conscious and was breathing properly. And, uh, oh yeah, if he was bleeding or not. Uh, I was the driver. A kid jumped out in front, and I swerved to avoid him and smashed into the telephone pole. Huh? <laughs> Did you just lie to me, mister? No, I was just, you know, not... I really hate liars. Come to think of it, the name's Seko. I heard that name before. I hear this Seko guy's been going around the organization-controlled areas and doing business using dirty tricks. Good timing. I wanted to hear about this in more detail. I... Uh, I was only... Tetsu, Yasu, show our guest to the office, would ya? 
Those big burly guys took Mr. Seko away. To where? I have no idea. So, what do you say? Want to put together an agreement? I had this great opportunity right in my grasp, but I wasn't able to give him an answer right away. If I sign an agreement, this project would probably be successful, but... Well, they say, what goes around comes around, but I wasn't sure that really applied to business. No, sir, it sure is an inviting proposal, but you know, I'm gonna pass on it. I want to be successful on my own merits, by working hard and doing things the right way. Yeah, I get it. Doing business with the likes of us can be a little risky. No, sir, it's not that. Please, don't get me wrong. Don't worry about it. I get it, kid. But you should do the negotiations. Hey, Seijima, talk to him and lay down the options, and then we can consider if you want to move forward with the agreement. Strictly business. Strictly business, my friend. You got it, sir! Thank you so much, Mr. Kyohoku! It's unusual to see someone in this day and age who would go about business just on emotions and not worry about the consequences of the future. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. But for you, kid, I think there are good opportunities awaiting you. So until then, hope things work out for you. Take care, kid. Isn't that a lollipop? With that, Mr. Kyohoku left. With his final words, I gained courage and confidence and decided to sign the agreement after looking over the details. Okay, so let's conclude this agreement as stipulated here. Thank you. I look forward to your business. The contract was fair and without complications, and eventually, the project concluded successfully. Hey! I heard that Seka was in trouble! Seems the project he headed... Well, the clients are now demanding compensation for some breach of contract. The higher-ups are furious. I hear he's going to be transferred next week. Well, I guess what goes around comes around. Yeah? <laughs> hey, man. Thanks. I wonder if Mr. Kyohoku and his men had anything to do with it. Made him an offer he couldn't refuse. <laughs> do you know something I don't? The boss was saying Seko kept mentioning your name. Yeah. <laughs> What's that about? I was able to get a promotion after that big project, and I'm really looking forward to taking on new and more interesting projects. To think the scary Yakuza Mr. Kyohoku was sucking on a lollipop this whole time seems like the highlight of this little story. Phew. All clean. Thank you so much! No problem. It's the least I can do. My name is Ichi. I'm 18 years old, and a member of the Shingeki High School baseball team. I'm normally a regular player, but I've been on the bench ever since I twisted my ankle. Since I can't do anything else, I've been helping the underclassmen with various things. I've been feeling down since I can't do anything for my team on the field, but there was a more pressing issue than that. Hmm? That issue being... Ichikun. Our team manager smells terrible! Has your ankle gotten better? Yeah, a bit, thanks. Come on, it's almost summer! Why are you still wearing long sleeve shirts? Her name shirts. is Mika. She's super pretty, the same grade as me. She joined about a year ago as our manager. I've never noticed it up until now, but spending so much time with her on the bench, I've become painfully aware of her stench. Since our school's team is so strong, there are a lot of players who don't become regulars. Those players always have to get things ready and do cleanup with her, not to mention take care of the grounds, clean, and do laundry. Of course, I do what I can, but I can't help but notice her terrible stench every day of practice. She's so cute, but her stench is like a weapon! I'm so conflicted! I guess it's because she's a girl, but none of the other members can say anything to her about it. Break time! No one asked her out despite how good looking she is. Surely it's gotta be because of the stench! One day after practice, it was just me and her cleaning up. Being in such close proximity to her, the smell became unbearable. Does she not notice it? Everyone else is starting to avoid her. Someone has got to say something. Hey, Mika. Hmm? What's up? 
I don't know how to say this, but you really smell. Do you have any idea what it could be? Huh? Really? That's weird. I'm showering once every three days. Why not every day? I've got to tell her. The uniform you're always wearing is especially smelly. The armpits are stained yellow. What? It smells good, though. Is there something wrong with her nose? Come on! I'll wash it for you. W wait! If you do, the smell will go away! What?! Mika told me the story behind the uniform. Apparently, it was a memento from her father. A year ago, he passed away from an illness. She told me about how it was a really hard time for her. He used to be the coach of the Shingeki High School baseball team. That's part of the reason why Mika loves baseball as much as she does now. She became manager of the baseball team so that she could wear her father's old uniform every day. She said the smell of that uniform was very comforting for her. I see. Still, the stench is just too much. Does it turn her on or something? For starters, you really should shower more often. Okay. I get how she feels, but I really wish she'd do something about the smell. Apparently the reason she doesn't shower very much is because she doesn't want her father's smell to fade from her body. I understood that she had her reasons, which is why I didn't do anything more at first. But a few weeks later, a problem arose at practice. It started pouring, and Mika didn't have a coat. She got covered in rain and mud. By the time we finished practice, it was obvious to everyone that her uniform finally had to be washed. Oh no. Finally, I'm left with no choice. Mika, leave it to me. Ichikun? Come with me. Huh? Get off! Uh, Ichikun! I brought Mika back to my house. Since I was raised by just my mother, I'm more skilled at doing various chores than most other boys my age. Plus, since spraining my ankle, I'd gotten even better at doing laundry. I understood how hard it was to only have one parent, which made me feel like I had to do something for Mika. That's why I looked up all sorts of ways to try and clean clothes. Perfect. Good as new. Wow. I never thought it would get so clean. But my father's smell. <laughs> Give it a whiff. Huh? <laughs> His smell is still there. But how? I told you it was perfect, didn't I? That's right. I was able to solve the issue of her father's smell. It was thanks to my sister, who's a makeup advisor. Not only that, but she's especially knowledgeable on scents and perfumes. I'd been asking her for advice about this for a while. Momo-chan as a sister is real nice. While we were washing Mika's uniform, we mixed a bunch of sample scents and analyzed the smells. That's it! We were able to perfectly recreate the scent Mika was looking for. Here you go. If you use this, you'll be able to smell your father anytime you want. Thank you. <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting that. It's not the exact same as the smell you knew before, but it's as close as we could get. Plus, now there's no sweat or stink. Now people won't be afraid to come near you. <laughs> Mika? Are you okay? Did I do something wrong? Is it not the right scent? No, it's not that. Thank you, Ichikun. The smell is perfect. It's clean now. I'm so happy. So then why are you- <laughs> It's been so hard for me. Huh? Like I told you, I always thought it was such a nice smell. But I could tell by the way other people treated me that they didn't like it. I knew people hated me for it. It was really hard for me. Mika. I knew people were avoiding me, even before you told me. But I couldn't give up his smell. I didn't know what to do. I understand. Thanks for telling me that. Everything's okay now. I know. Thank you so much. Haha, <laughs> no problem. Now you can shower with no worries. 
And don't worry, no one hates you, Mika. Huh? But... No matter your reason for joining the team, you're doing a great job, working hard for everyone. Everyone appreciates you for that. Really? Yep. I talked with a bunch of the other team members. They all feel the same. So just, uh... Be careful of how you smell and stuff, because you're, uh... Really cute. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh... You want me to get out? Dad is coming home late tonight! Shut up! You don't need to do that! A few days later... Good work, everyone! Make sure you drink lots of water! Thanks! You're the best! With that, Mika's stink problem was totally resolved. She was able to get along better with all of the players, and no one avoided her anymore. Far from avoiding her, Mika-san really is cute, isn't she? I'm gonna practice even harder so she compliments me! I'm hooked on her new scent! Everyone really loves her now. See you tomorrow! I'm glad things are better for you now. It's all thanks to you and your sister! I'm glad I've finally gotten to become closer to everyone on the team! I told you everything would be fine. Though I'm a bit sad myself to see you getting all this attention. Yeah, also... Huh? What are you doing? <laughs> There's another smell that I've been fond of recently. Huh? Does she mean... Lunch time! Lunch time! It's time for lunch, everyone! My name is Shuto Nakata. I'm a second year student at Shingeki High School. Recently, my father's company went bankrupt, and we ended up being really poor. As a result, I could not even afford to buy bread and ate bean sprouts for lunch. Bean sprouts! I drastically lost weight as a result. I was always on the skinny side, but I got even skinnier. <sighs> Eat up. I guess. Hey, did you see that picture Ryuji uploaded to Instagram? Yeah, I caught that! The one where he's doing pull-ups after being suspended? Those muscles, that bod! Super cool! That six-pack is over the top! Boy, I want some of that! Not again... The Jabbering Girls were three of the worst girls in class. The trio are super into muscles, and they're always going on about how well-developed this MMA fighter is, or how huge that athlete is, and so forth. Men gotta have muscles for sure. Yeah, I got no interest in scrawny wimps. Someone like that would never be able to protect us anyway. For example, that there Nakatani. Sure can't rely on that guy. So scrawny. Bet if I push, you go flying. For sure. Hey, what's he eating, bean sprouts? A bean sprout eating bean sprouts? <laughs> nice! Those three never fail to make fun of my skinny body. But the fact that I'm scrawny is in fact true, and I had no rebuttal. Can't be dating an underweight weakling. No way he could compete with sexy gals like us. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> no matter what they say, I had no choice but to take it and continue eating my bean sprout lunch. Maybe it was because I wasn't getting enough to eat. The PE class was especially hard. Class time! Class time! Class has begun! Okay, today's lesson is marathon running. Boys and girls, get ready to run laps around this here track! Yes, yes coach. coach! Oh boy, a marathon. Wonder if I can make it. Oh, the punishment of running laps under the hot, blazing sun. With my current condition, running just one lap was a struggle. Make sure you get enough fluids! I can't take it any water! I was burned out and headed toward the water fountains. What a life of paradise! While I was at it, I took the opportunity to fill my empty stomach with water. As a result, I didn't notice that fearsome threesome approaching. Man, I hate this marathon crap. Does he really think we're gonna actually run the whole thing? 
that super hyped coach? Man, I wish he would just give it a rest. Hey, Nakata. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> You're not burned out already, are you? Can't expect much from such a scrawny little wimp. <laughs> <laughs> Want us to give you a workout? Not a bad idea. What? What? Come on, put some strength into your tummy. You're gonna fall over. This guy is light as a feather. Would you please stop? Drank too much water. My stomach. Man, he's wobbly. What a disgrace. Not enough water, huh? Have some more water. No, oh, please. Any more and I'm gonna throw up. Don't worry about it. Want some help with it? Hey, Mika. You mean... Huh? Here go! Have some water! Ah! She took the hose and drenched me with water! See what I did? This wimp has no muscles. Like a beanpole. That he weighs like zero. At first, I wasn't sure what they were cackling about. But then I looked down and understood why. My belly! The wet t-shirt was now translucent and stuck to my body, exposing my belly! Stop gawking! If you're so offended, put on some muscle. You're all bone. I see no potential in this bean sprout. You make a peep about this to the coach, and you get double the payback. Got it? See ya, bean sprout! What the hell? Why me? <laughs> After school that day, I was on my way home. Bean sprout, huh? I usually don't mull too much over such things, but after repeating those words over and over in my head, it really started to weigh me down. The patronizing way they looked at me felt like a knife in my heart. Would they look at me differently if I put on muscle? But with a skin and bones body like this, it would be impossible. Hmm? What's this? Physical labor? The poster was a part-time job ad for construction work. 1,200 yen an hour. High school students welcome. Want to put on some muscle and get revenge? This is what I was looking for! I can make money and I can put on muscle. Just what I want. I couldn't sit still. I was so excited. I called the number right away. Okay, new recruit. Carry this over here. Yes, sir. Ronnie kid, but gotta say, you got guts! After we're done, I'll take you to eat some yakiniku. Gonna put some stamina into you, young man. Thanks, sir. So here I was, working at the construction site. The job was pretty exhausting, but I wasn't about to give up. I had the need for money, of course, but I had this craving to really change myself. 98! 99! Ah! With the stick tin body, I really put all my effort into it. Okay, students, another day, another marathon. Really shining there, coach. Feels like my PE clothes are kind of small. These are the only set I have, and I sure don't have the cash to buy another set. Gonna just have to wait for the next payday. I hope I'm not being scrutinized by everyone around me. Hey, why'd you take a look at his clothes? Huh? School's out! School's out! Get adequate rest! Whoa, that's super refreshing. Hey, Nakata. Why don't you get rid of the clothes? Huh? Looks like it's shrunk. Why don't you just go out and buy a new set? That's because... Can't even buy new PE clothes? <laughs> huh? What's it to you? Leave me alone. What did you say? Hey, you half starved wimp! Why are you being so cocky? Who do you think you are anyway? Don't get carried away on your high horse, you puny little bean sprout. Hey, is that a fight? Maybe we better call the coach? Quit calling me Bean Sprout! My name is Shuto Nakata! <laughs> uh, bean Sprout, huh? Well then, prove it! Show us that sorry looking belly of yours. Ah, hey, would you just. Stop! I'm soaked! Ripples! I can't believe it. Nakata, 
you're slim but muscular. Well, cool. Those are six packs, aren't they? Everyone's eyes were riveted towards me. I looked down and realized why. I was working at the construction site and. Huh? I was working like five hours a day, doing a hundred sit ups a day. My schedule was pretty tough. The yakiniku that the guys at work treated me to also had an effect. By the time I realized it, I was nicely muscled. Why would you not notice that, Nakata? That Nakata? Not a bean sprout. No. no. Not, not at, all. at all. Let's have lunch together afterward. Come on. I'm gonna buy some melon bread, so. What? Seeing my abs, the girls started hanging around me as if nothing had happened. Nakata, after looking at you more closely, you look just like the singer Yuji. Yeah, me too. His abs are rippling too. Can I touch them? Hey, what are you doing barging in like that? Let me have a feel too! Just because my appearance had changed, to change so abruptly, I was a little irked by this sudden change of attitude. Would you guys just stop? Rika? Why are you two being so lovey-dovey? Get away from him! Yeah, give him a little talking to. Shuto is my guy. What?! Why did you tell me sooner that you have such a rape body? Don't be a stranger. What?! Huh? Hmm? So, where do you want to go after school? I wanted to try out that shop near the station, what do you think? There's a bunch of stuff I want to buy, you okay with cash, right? She was hosing him down a second ago, right? Oh, crap. I really couldn't comprehend what these girls were talking about. There is one request. Yeah, what is it? Could you not touch me? What? What do you mean? I'm your girlfriend, right? I don't recall ever going out with you. What? You can't obey my command? You better just be glad that you can even go out with a beautiful and sexy girl like me! Sorry to burst your bubble, but I have no interest in you guys. What? You girls don't give a damn about others. You have no remorse about hosing someone down. You really think anybody would have affection for you guys just because you're cute and attractive? Apparently they never experienced being dumped by someone. They just sat there like deer caught in a car's headlights. The first to react was their leader, Rika. Don't give us that crap. Nobody can resist this glamorous body. You're no man if you can. Unbelievable. No way. What conceit. What? You like women with no boobs? Well, I guess just a while back you had a wimpy body. Seems fitting that you would fall for someone with the same kind of body. Are you implying that we all have scrawny bodies? Sounds to me like you guys are making fun of us. Rika, come on, not cool. I'm not making fun of you. I always thought this, but just because you have nice bodies doesn't mean you can be so cocky. What? Shut your... Besides, a guy's body defines who he is, and in the same way a woman's body determines her value. I never heard that. Coach! So that statement, can I take it as a challenge? You three... I heard you host this guy down nicely. I want to hear a little more of that statement and afterward. Let's have a little meeting back at my office. What? We're, We're so, so sorry! Hey, Shujo! Give some help over here, too! Yes, sir. I wonder if those guys will be okay carrying all that load. I suppose they deserved it. The reason they're all working here, you ask? After getting reprimanded by the coach the other day, they just couldn't accept the outcome. They ultimately got caught shoplifting at the store near the station. Obviously, the shop owner contacted the school, and they got a real lambasting. As a consequence, they were punished by having to work at this construction site. The construction foreman is a good friend of mine, so I asked him to give the girls a real workout. That face is real woozy. <sighs> I guess it's a good opportunity for them to realize how hard it is to really put on muscle. My name is Suguru Hotokawa. I'm an elementary school teacher. I may be calm and quiet now, but I wasn't always that way. In middle school, I was a delinquent. My neglectful parents abandoned me, 
and I didn't have any close friends. I was truly alone. My loneliness took the form of rebellion. There were some other students that looked up to me then. You're so cool, boss! <laughs> right? So badass! I don't even know you. Get lost! Can I copy you, boss? Me too! Boss! Hey, boss! That was my life. Up until one day, I got tired of getting yelled at in class. So I went up to the roof to take a nap. Hosokawa, why do you always insist on rebelling all the time? Leave me alone. You idiot! Can't you see that I'm just asking why? I'm not scolding you just because. I want to actually know. If you have a good reason that would make me understand, then go ahead. Out with it. That was a wake-up call. I didn't have any reason for rebellion. I was just doing what I wanted and not thinking about anyone else. I realized that I was just lonely and I wanted someone to pay attention to me. I rethought everything and I decided to change my ways. Boss, how about a mohawk? That'll really stick it to teach. Oh look, I dyed my hair red. Isn't that so badass? Mamo, Michiko, I hate to let you down. But I decided to choose a proper path for my future. What? Boring. Why would you want to do that? Mama, Michiko, don't go talking shite. Don't be a nuisance to other people. Don't live your lives just for self-gratification. It's not too late for you guys. Whatever you do, don't be like me. Boss? I don't know what he's talking about, but it's so badass. Man, that was 15 whole years ago. Mr. Mr. Hosokawa! I? Can you scoot over? I have another buddy coming over. Never thought I'd run into Mama or Michiko again. The two of them just so happened to be the parents of one of the boys in my class. I thought when I gave that advice to them all those years ago, they would have cleaned up their act, but... Mr. Waga, this is a routine visit of my students' homes. So, I didn't expect you to invite friends over and throw a party during a time like this. This is the Reiwa style! Woohoo! It's lit! It's like I'm not even here. I'm always asking my students to give me a reason to repair that would make me understand, so I figured it'd be fair and ask the parents. Um, what exactly do you mean by Reiwa style? These home visits are an important part of my job as your son's teacher. So I'm being honest, I don't think drinking is really appropriate. Not to mention doing so right in front of Tadashi-kun. Come on, teach! Don't be such a buzzkill! Our generation is one of freedom, right? Everyone knows that breaking the mold is just another way of expressing yourself! <laughs> right? Quit being so boring, teach! Stop living in the past. I've got to be going to my next appointment. Hmm? Tadashi-kun? Are you studying? <sighs> it's lit! Don't you want to go study in your room? I'm sure you can't focus out here, right? I'm fine. I wonder what he thinks of his parents. Not like I can ask him that. I was worried about Tadashi being raised by essentially lawless animals. I thought about getting in touch with his grandparents, but that would have just been even more trouble. Inviting people over and having a bunch of drinks during the daytime, no less. I was really worried about him, but I didn't know what the best thing to do was. My stress reached its peak, for better or worse, on open school day. Hey, it's open school day. Hey, it's open school day. Good morning! Okay, um, our plan for today is... Everyone is going to draw a picture of your parents. They're standing in the back there, so free to look there for reference. The parents and the kids looked at each other... Sh the parents and the kids looked at each other shyly, and a calm fell over the classroom, until... Hello? Oh, hey, Ryohei! 
I'm at my kid's school right now. Really? Unbelievably, Mama Owaga began talking on the phone. No way. For the next event? Yeah, I'll go. But you're buying me a drink. <laughs> no way. <coughs> what are you looking at? Uh, knowing that other parents wouldn't say anything, those two behaved as if the classroom was their own house. Miss Waga, smoking is prohibited in the classroom. Also, if you could please put your phone on silent... Screw you! You know we're only doing this because your class is so damn boring. Enough of this! I'm sorry to all of you other parents. It was then that I showed them my true form. Looks like I gave you guys too much credit! Excuse me? Who do you think you're talking to? We're the parents! You can't talk to us like that! Like hell I can't! <laughs> Mamo chan calm down. Teach, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm gonna call the school board. Flipping out on a parent? I hope you have your money to pay us reparations. Heh, <laughs> from following me around like a couple of helpless ducklings, you really learned how to negotiate like adults, didn't you? Huh? You used to call me boss so affectionately. Now you think you're the boss because you're the parents? No way. Hosokawa Senpai? Back then, when you promised me that you'd give up. Back then, when you promised me that you'd give up your delinquent ways. I guess that was just talk, huh? You don't even care if you bother anyone else. You must think you're hot shite, huh? Huh? No, we are. Uh... We're still young, so we didn't know any better. Young? You're only a year younger than me. I don't know all this bullshit about Rewa style or expressing yourself or whatever. What I do know is that it's no excuse to go around doing whatever you want with no consideration for anyone else. <laughs> After that, cut it out! Tadashi! Help us! You should be ashamed of yourselves! I can't tell which one of us is the child! Stop harassing the teacher! I hate you guys! Seriously? <laughs> Could you please leave? My kid can't focus with you two here. Uh, I can't take this anymore! So not cool! After that, I apologize to the rest of the parents. No, no. I'm relieved to see that you're such an excellent teacher. There aren't many people who can lay down the law like that. That was mesmerizing. But they ended up complimenting me. From that day on, Everyone in the class saw Tadashi in a different light, and he was able to fit in much better. That was so cool! His parents were ashamed, being scolded by their son like that. His grandparents stepped in and made sure that they behaved properly. While freedom and expression of oneself is important, that doesn't mean one should forget morals and common sense. <laughs> Look at Kaito! She's eating lunch by herself again. Poor loner. Well, I'm afraid I get eaten if I get near the giant. That's not nice, Kobayashi! Her name is Eri Kaito. She's our classmate who just transferred to Shingeki High School this spring. With a height of 180 centimeters, she's the tallest girl in the school. Because of this, some of the guys call her a giant and make fun of her. Kaito-san usually doesn't talk to anyone and eats alone during her lunch breaks. Led by Kobayashi, the three guys in the class always badmouth her so she can hear. Being that big, her monthly food expenses must be really expensive. She's just a girl. How awful. But I, Yuto Tanaka, didn't have the courage to stop them and could only watch from the corner of the classroom. Because before Kaito-san transferred to our class, I was their target. I didn't want Kaito-san to go through the same experience, but I was too afraid of their attention turning to me if I defended her. One day after school, Kaito-san was carrying a large amount of documents staggering down the hallway. Uh, uh... Why is she carrying all of that? It's not safe. Huh? Uh, hey! Where are you taking that? Huh? Um, I have to take it to the science lab? By yourself? 
But you're not on day duty today, are you? Apparently those three guys forced her to carry it by herself since she was a giant. You didn't have to go out of your way to help me. Don't mind me! <laughs> <laughs> you're kind, Tanaka-kun. Thanks. Huh? Um... Uh, I'm not nice at all. I usually turn a blind eye when people talk behind her back, and I probably wouldn't have approached her if there were other people around. I'm just a hypocrite. By the way, are you joining any clubs? What? You're tall, so I'm sure you do well in sports. Uh... I'm actually not very athletic. Oh. I was often ridiculed at my old school because I'm just tall for nothing. Kaido-san. But, you know, I don't feel bad about being tall. There are some good things that come with it. Good things? It brings me closer to the sky. Hmm. I'm just kidding. Then Kaito-san laughed. I didn't know what she meant at the time. But I thought her smile was really nice. Okay, my house is that way. Thanks for helping me out today. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Hey, Tanaka! <gasps> Getting close with that giant? Huh? W what are you talking about? I saw you guys talking happily in front of the school gate. I'll let you off the hook for now because I'm having more fun playing with her. But the next time you talk to that giant, I'll turn you into my toy again, skinny nerd. I was too shaken to say anything back. Ever since that day, I started avoiding Kaito-san at school. Morning. Every time I ignored her, my heart ate. But I'm sure she was more hurt than I was. <sighs> After a while, Kaito-san stopped talking to me. Then one day... You guys, the marathon's off for now. Evacuate to the school building! Oh, I'm soaking wet! It came down all of a sudden! Hey, look at that! Hmm? Aren't Kaito's gym clothes too small? Her belly button's sticking out! Maybe she grew taller again! She really is a giant! They look even tighter because it's wet! Harassing her again? I ignored the three of them as usual and tried to enter the school building. The moment we saw Kaito's back, we were shocked! Hey, isn't she hiding something? What's that pattern? Could it be a tattoo? Uh, Could Kaito be the daughter of a Yakuza or something? If, if that's the case, we're in trouble, aren't we? After school, I called Kaito-san into the classroom. Partly because I was curious if she actually had a tattoo, but more importantly because I wanted to apologize. Kaito-san, I'm so sorry for everything I've done. You were trying to be my friend, but I didn't have the courage to face you. She doesn't have to forgive me. I just wanted to apologize for hurting her. You don't have to apologize, Tanaka-kun. But I ignored you! <sighs> That's because you were afraid of them, right? It's their fault for taking advantage of people's weakness. You have nothing to worry about, Tanaka-kun. Although, I didn't plan on exposing the tattoo. So it was real after all? If you're that curious, do you want me to show you? What? Wait! It's just one. It was a tattoo of a pair of wings with English letters in the middle. J-O-H-N? John? Yeah, it's my dad's name. I'm actually half American. As she showed me her tattoo, she told me about her past. She was born in the U.S. and lived there until she finished middle school. Her father was a pilot and she loved flying in his Cessna more than anything. But when she was 15, her beloved father was diagnosed with cancer and passed away. In the midst of her grief, she had to move to Japan, which was her mother's homeland. She got the tattoo before she left the U.S. It's so that my dad can always watch over me from the sky, no matter how far away I am. Because the sky is connected. I see. So that's why you said it brings me closer to the sky. Yeah, but don't tell the teachers about the tattoo, okay? I don't know what they'll say if they find out. About that... Kobayashi and the others... Thanks for telling me all about it. <gasps> we were right to follow you. I knew she wasn't no Yakuza daughter. You scared me. You... You've been eavesdropping? Kaito, I was so moved by your story. It makes me want to tell the others. 
but I guess you get expelled if I do that. But don't worry. We're nice, so we'll keep it a secret. But... Only if you show me your tattoo... In front of the camera. Assholes! They're gonna use it to threaten you even more! Don't do it, Kaito! You shut your mouth and stay out of this! Ugh! Tanaka-kun! Come on now. Don't you care about what happens to this scrawny little bastard? <sighs> Fine. I'll show. So don't harm Tanaka-kun. Kaito-san! No! I like that face. Just because you're taller than us doesn't mean you can always look down on us, now does it? We've always hated you. Now it's your turn to bow down to us. Now show us your tattoos. No! What? This guy? Who do you think you are? Tanaka-kun, over here. Kaito-san! What? We're getting out of here. That's a window. This is the second floor. Tanaka-kun, flying is fun. Later, when the school found out what happened, the trio was expelled for attempting to commit a lewd act on Kaito-san. I heard that they made excuses in tears, saying that they were just trying to check if she had tattoos. The teachers didn't believe them, and Kaito-san was never punished in any way. I was so happy to hear that, but... What? You're going back to America? Yeah, my mom got a job over there. I have to go as well. I see. I didn't know how to interact with the people around me when I first came to Japan, but you were kind enough to talk to me. Thanks for being my friend. I was the one who wanted to thank her. Kaito-san was my close friend. I'll come see you in America. I promise. I don't know when, but I definitely will. Yeah, I'll be waiting. plane flew Kaito-san high into the sky, but I wasn't sad, because I knew we would meet again. No matter how far away we are, the sky is still connected.